Mississippi John Hurt's Lewis Collins. Mm, another great song by John Hurt. All his songs are about dying and going into heaven to meet your maker or just to end up as clay in the ground. Another intense tune. Really cool song. Tricky finger picking tune. I'm not going to lie. I think a lot of you guys can get the basics. Again, it's, it's really simple chords. CFG. John Hurt's usual methodology. Um, but really quick, um, fanciful playing. Let's do it. Paul in the UK. This song goes out to Paul in the UK. Um, the song was on the list, but Paul in the UK, thank you, was kind enough to throw a little coin in the tip jar, which inched the song up. Uh, but keep, please keep sending song suggestions. Um, I want to get to as many as possible. The list is long, but a lot on the list either I don't love or I don't think that many people are going to enjoy. Um, and if you really are eager to get a song down, you want to learn it, and there's not a good tutorial, throw a couple bucks and that'll bump you up. So this goes out to Paul. Thank you, Paul. But also to all my patrons. I don't thank you guys enough when I make these videos, but I think you you know how much I appreciate it that I am actually able to make these videos. And not only do I appreciate it, but everyone, you know, every person watching these videos, I think my, my version of Kathy's song has like 20,000 views now, which is so cool. Because even of those 20,000, maybe, I don't know how many people are sitting down and learning the whole thing, but it's your money that you're donating to that Patreon that is educating. I get like the most heart-touching emails from people all over the world being like, you know, during, you know, Karanku, I was able to get my guitar out of the closet and I, I learned this song I never thought I'd be able to play after giving it only three months time, you know, two months time watching your tutorial. So to all my patrons, thank you. And I, I thank you on the behalf of all of these people tuning in right now. I really appreciate it. All right, let's do it. First measure, we've got a G chord. We just need three and three on the sixth and first strings. You pinch, six and one, then your thumb is alone on the fourth string. That's it. Now when I move, you don't want you don't want it to slide. You don't want that sliding sound. So you're gonna do pinch, thumb alone, then you lift them up and you move them to five and five. And here we do thumb, and then we pinch four. It's a lot quicker. And again, I'm gently lifting here so I don't get a slide. Here we got some John Hurt stuff already. This measure is tricky. Um, easy to understand, but very fast, very cool. So we got um, a G chord again. We're just pinching here, three and three, six and one then thumbs alone, but right after we do the thumb on the fourth string, we're quickly, quickly doing the second string. Nothing too crazy there, but after you do that, you're immediately pinching six and one again, but you're sounding a G7 chord. You got your G here and your F, first fret, first string. And then the same thing, thumb on the fourth, and then second string. So pinch, thumb, and pinch, thumb, four and two, and then pinch again, and then thumb is on four, and X is on two. Easy enough concept, but he has this nice little pep to it. Those two measures together. measure is a C chord. Really fun measure. All right, so we've got just uh, pinching on five and one, then thumb alone on four, then a quick and on the first string. And I'm using my middle finger both times on that. Pinch, thumb, and middle, thumb on the fourth, middle again. Then the second half of the measure is thumb on the fifth again, index on the second string, then you pinch four and first string, and then a quick and right after with your pinky down on the third fret of the first string. So that measure all together, 
Very cool. Mike's Music Method and friends have been doing very fun uh, weekly Zoom chats, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Check out the link down below. Anyone is welcome. We just kind of hang out and, you know, it's, it's uh, Kofufu time. So we're just like hanging out, talking about life encouraging each other in music you know occasionally there's someone's playing a little tune i'm gonna put you on the spot if you're a newcomer i'm gonna make you play something no i won't but maybe uh but we just hang out and we talk music and life and it's fun and um if you have any guitar related questions or music stuff you, you're you know more than welcome to come and ask those or just hang out for the camaraderie so here we are on measure three i recorded everything and then i didn't even realize i was doing this until i kind of was watching a video of myself playing it because this habit is ingrained. But the end of that measure, when you get it up to speed, is incredibly quick. So even now, I'm, I'm doing it how I taught you to do it, which is middle, middle. But when I'm playing it really quick, I'm doing a combination of two fingers on the same string. And if this, I, I got that from like the classical world, right? Like guys play their scales like this, and they can do it lightning speed back and forth between I and M. Um, I don't do it a ton, because I never ingrained it that deeply. I'm, I grew up, you know, playing with a pick. I grew up listening to thrash metal and stuff. So the, the flat picking is still in me. So I, I'm not as quick with these fingers. But when it's a really quick melodic line, you're going to be doing a combination of like middle index. And so that's what's happening here. So I'm doing middle index to get that open three. Because we have three melody notes all in a row at the end of that measure. One on the second string, open three. So that's something to practice, right? Pinch with the thumb in the middle, then the index plays the next note. Gotta get that really smooth. So I'm not gonna dive into a very deep you know, there's a lot of technique in that, but as, as folk players and blues players, we, we kind of don't appreciate how insane those classical guitar finger pickers are. So it would be a good time now to actually, uh, you know, YouTube some of them. I'm not the best at breaking down that technique. I could do it okay, but there's guys out there who probably already have tons of great videos. Um, just like YouTube, you know, right hand classical guitar technique or how to play scales fast on the classical guitar or something ridiculous like that. And some guy will just, he'll be like Eddie Van Halen of the, I don't even like Van Halen, but you know what I mean? Just very quick right hand stuff. Um, not that you need to go that quick, but I think you get the idea. It's just every once in a while, two fingers in a row, right? Practice some scales with just your uh, right hand fingers even if you wanted to do like a G major scale. Write a million exercises you could give yourself to get this habit a little bit more ingrained. But probably worth watching a five or 10 minute technique video on it. I'm not gonna do it now. I'm ran, this is a, this is a rambling, this is John Hurt's Mike's Music Method rambling uh, lesson today. I got a lot of words, too many words, but you're gonna get all of them. I'm gonna keep all the extra ones in, not gonna edit them out. So you're gonna have to deal with it you're gonna go, why am I watching this Buttholes YouTube channel? Cause he's wasting my day, wasting my time, but I'm not, we're building a relationship. If you were my friend, this is what you would have to deal with all, all the time. <laughs> so at least you can fast forward if you think I'm gonna go on for too long, you know, click that little L button a few times. Eh, you getting annoyed yet? All right, sorry, I'll stop. You're cute, I only do it cause you're cute and we're friends now. We're friends, so it's like we're hanging out, you, get to, you have to deal with the banter. Okay, I'll stop now for real. Keep at it. You're going to do it. You're going to get it. It's, you're going to get it. It's easy. Just think this. Just go to, go to your friends. Go to go, you know, your girlfriend next time she's in the room. Just do that right in her face. And if she's, what are you doing? Just say, I'm practicing, okay? I'm working on my guitar technique. My music, my guitar teacher told me to practice like this. And just like, put it in her ear, you know? Just start annoying people with these fingers. Look at faster. That, that builds up the strength, especially when you... Dig it into someone's ear, right near their eye. Stick it in their ear, then their eye. You know, t talk to them about germs while you do it too. Next measure here is simple. We, um, it's still a C chord, but you're bringing the ring finger up to the G, right? So it's a C chord with a G in the bass. We've done this a bunch. If you've watched any of my other videos, classic C, I can't talk, C slash G chord. And we're hitting that. And then 
his thumb again, John Hurt's always heavy handed. So he's not just hitting the fourth string, but he's hitting the third with it. So six, four, and three, six, four, and three. So those last two measures together of C are this. So I'm still letting that pinky ring from that previous measure. I'm just bringing that ring finger up down, down lower for the next measure. For those of you singers, let's put it together really slow with the vocal, the first four measures. Three, four. Angels lay away. Next two measures of C chord. They're all fun. They're all fun measures in this song. John Hurt. It's why we love them. Why we love them. All right, so we got a regular C chord. We're pinching at five and one. Thumb alone on four, and then and is on the second string. Pinch, thumb, and. Then it's just thumb, thumb. Easy enough measure. Bum, bum. And then the following measure, we put our pinky down on the. Um, uh, first string, third fret. Thumb and is the first string. Thumb on the fourth and on the first string again. Back to thumb on the fifth. Well, let's just break that down. We got thumb and thumb and. Right, easy enough. Fifth string first, fourth string first. Then it ends fifth string open on the first string. So we lift the pinky. And then we pinch with our pinky going down on the third fret of the second string. And we pinch four and two there. So that second measure again is five, one, four, one, five, one with it open, pinch, four and two with the third fret down on two. So those two measures, three, four. One more time, three, four. Here we have a measure of F, and I've had several students and people comment how they can't, they're having trouble with the wraparound on the F chord, right, getting the thumb around there. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it, it did take me a while to get used to it, but everyone has a different hand size, so I don't want you to give up too soon, but I also don't want to tell you, keep trying, keep trying, if, if you just got a wonky thumb joint, or if you're hand's not that big, or if your you know, hand is, is designed in such a way by God that it's difficult for you to wrap your thumb around it. I'm also, I mean, I can do it on a nylon string guitar, but maybe for some people it's just the kind of guitar. I really don't like playing like Gibson SGs or, or Les Pauls, because especially the Les Pauls, they have such a fat neck that it's harder for me. It just doesn't feel right in my hand. So there's a lot of factors that go into that wraparound thumb chord idea. If, if you've tried and you've given it a few, several months and you're still struggling or it's painful, there is a workaround. It's not as ideal, but still doable. And I'll show you what that is. It's basically, you just take your F bar chord and what you do is you get rid of your pinky and you drop your ring finger down to where your pinky was because we're not gonna pick this fifth string. So you don't need to play it. So my thumb or my index finger is playing that low one and it's also barring the top two, which is still pretty difficult, right? Still requires quite a bit of hand strength. Um, and remember, when you're playing a bar chord, you're not really straight on. You're kind of rolling out that way a little bit away from you and using the sides of your finger. And this is something just to practice is where exactly is the pressure on your finger joint that you want to get that sound? Right, so you can experiment rolling back and forth. You can experiment like putting it higher than you would think appropriate. For me, that's awful. Or real low. For me, that's no good. There's kind of a specific sweet spot where it's just easier for, for my finger, you know, depending where the joints are. Um, so it's not a one size fits all thing. You know, even though the hats say that, you know, you might buy a ball cap, it says one size fits all. If they never fit mine, they don't fit this melon. I mean, maybe you can't tell on the screen, but I got a big noggin. It's a lie. So same with the F chord, one size doesn't fit all. So if you, the reason we're doing it this way, bar chord, get rid of the pinky, drop the ring finger, is this frees up your pinky to get
get all those melody notes in there. So the next two measures I'll explain with the thumb and the other way. If you're already using the thumb, you know, just ignore and skip ahead. But for those of you looking for a different alternative, we'll, we'll talk about it here. We've already been talking about it, but I'll explain next. I'll put it in the context of the song. Here we go on F, a fun hoppy measure. We are pinching six and two on an F chord. Again, with a thumb, I'm just doing the second string. One, two, three, second, third, fourth, one, two, three, and the thumb's on one. So I am pinching six and two, thumbs on the fourth, and then an and on the third string. Pinch, two, and. Then it ends, three, just the thumb alone is the third beat. And then I'm pinching four and two, but my pinky goes down on the second, on the third fret of the second string. So they're both third frets there. first measure, then very similar, it starts the same, the next measure of it is the eighth measure of the song, we have pinch, thumb, and, so that's exactly the same, then we end, thumb, and, thumb, and, and that's open on the third string, so we got sixth string, fourth string with the index, or sorry, six, third string with the index, thumb does the fourth string, and then I lift the third string, and I play it open. Hard not to get it to buzz. You really want to make sure you're only playing with your fingertips here. So those two measures, three, four. fingernails right that's a that's a common problem if your fingernails on your left hand are too long sometimes you can't quite get on your fingertips like you like you'd like to to get the leverage so cut them or eat them tastes like gravy now if you can't do the thumb wrap around let's talk about this measure of music this two measures of music again get rid of the pinky drop the ring finger only so now our pinky is free to add those notes of color and it's kind of the same idea right Pin here when we do the pinch, I'm still using my pinky. I mean, it's exactly the same, except it just feels a little different. Now this one's harder, and this is the only reason I, I say don't jump to it unless you have to, because in order to make that third string open, I can't just lift this finger, the FU finger, because my, my um, first finger is still down, and I don't want the first fret. I want that string to be open. So I do have to lift that finger up. Now, I'm not gonna lift all of it. I'm gonna keep this first finger down and kind of roll it up like that. What's a better angle? Yeah, so this note can still ring, right? But I'm, I'm lifting it up off the other strings. Right, this is still down and, and sounding. Um, so that's the only thing. So, so if you were playing this second string, for example, you're, you're gonna lose the sound when you lift it. A little bit of a compromise, but you know what? You can still get really smooth at this, right? So it still sounds pretty darn good. Right, hardly, hardly noticeable that you're losing that one little note in there for half a second, especially when you get it up to speed. You're good, you can play it that way. You don't need to use your thumb. So let's go back to the fifth measure and we're gonna put the lyrics to it. If you're gonna sing this, if you're gonna play this song to speed and sing it, Good luck to you. <laughs> I haven't practiced it yet that much, just kind of as I was learning it. It's hard, so good luck to it. Let's do it really slow and try it. Three, four, they lay him six feet under the clay. One more time. Three, four, they lay him six feet under You got eight measures. There's only four more measures. It's just 12 measures long, it repeats. There is a harder version where he's, John gets warmed up, but we'll get to that later. But basically the basics, 99% of it, after this four more measures, you got it. Keep doing it, you're doing so well. A very easy measure of C is measure nine here. Pinch, five and one. And thumb goes back and forth between five. 
five and four. Pitch four, five, four. Then we go to a measure of G. Thumb, thumb, and thumb on the sixth, thumb on the fourth, and on the second. Then thumb, and we put the pinky down on the second string, third fret. And then the last and goes to the first fret of the second string. Thumb, thumb, and thumb, third fret, thumb, first fret. So all those ands are on the second string. This measure is a little bit tricky. We're back to a C chord, and it's pretty uh, standard at first. Well, let me play it. We got thumb, thumb, and. So fifth, fourth, second, nothing weird there. One, two, and. Then we have thumb, and what we do is we hit the and on the third string, but we're gonna hammer it. And this is what's weird. We, we can't move our middle finger because we're going to play that note on the very next beat. So we have to lift up our first finger to hammer open to two on the third string. So I'm tucking that first finger, you know, underneath the middle. You know, it's even hard to see from that angle. You get the idea though. I'm hammering open to two on the third string. So we have thumb, thumb, and thumb. Now when I hammer though, it's this compound movement idea. So I'm hammering onto the third string, and right when I hammer, my thumb hits the fourth string. So I'm sounding both of these twos at the same time. So often when people hammer, they'll use the middle finger, but here we, we're, we don't want to lose that note, so we're, so we're picking this one up. And then to make it a little bit harder, of course, Hurt's going to do that to us, because he hurts. Huh? <laughs> that was a good one, I just thought of it right now. I got a quick mind. Mississippi John hurts. You, when you your loser self is trying to learn his complicated song, give it up, you punk kid on the internet. You're not John Hurt. You're never going to be able to play this song. Who do you think you are trying to learn it? You're a worthless musician. Mississippi John hurts your soul. Mississippi John hurts your ego and deflates it to a little worm. You're like a worm in the ground, kid. You're never going to learn this song. Give it up. My eyes are twitching. I'm so impassioned. Look what you guys made me do. I didn't even finish the measure. I'm not, I can't, I'm being, bleh. Let's do it, the last note. Right, so we hammer and pinch at the same time. And then immediately our first finger has to go back to the first fret on the second string, which is very hard to speed. Make sure you give that time. A good hammer on, followed by the first fret. Now, a common problem too for beginners, even even you know intermediate players who who aren't thoughtful, like myself included. I, I'll pull off too quick to get to the right. I don't want that to be a pull off though, but I'm trying to do it so quickly that I'm right now. This string is ringing. I don't want that. I want to hammer, and I want to make sure I'm lifting softly enough. just ends thumb, then he strums, uh, you know, the three strings, maybe four, or three, and two. For the singers in the crowd, the last four measures with the vocals, three, four, the angels, lady. reality I would have as much time to geek out on my with my vocals as I do on the guitar but I don't right so there is this thing called phrasing right it's hard enough to match the pitch get the words but then there's this idea of phrasing and with with vocals it can be hard to know because you can say the same line in so many different ways right you can hold a note a half a beat longer right or, or, or hit the next note a half a beat earlier and you can mess with this phrasing. So I have not sat down and I'm not like exactly trying to get John Hurt's phrasing. And I'm not saying there isn't value in that, right? That is a cool chop to develop, like learn how these other 
singers are getting these subtle nuanced things that make it interesting. Like Dylan, right? I mean, the guy's voice is pretty, pretty damn annoying, but his phrasing is so good that you keep, you keep listening. Even, even though you might find his voice annoying, there's something about his delivery, the rhythm of his delivery, am amongst other things, but certainly the, the, ryth the rhythmic element adds a lot to it. And same with John Hurt or just the blues in general. You know, things maybe go a little longer or a little quicker and shorter than you anticipate. And that's what makes it interesting. But we're not going to do that here. I'd want you to get the picking down. You know, maybe there'll be Mike's, Maria's music lesson and maybe Maria, this is a fictional person, but maybe someone else is doing this and breaking down phrasing in detail to vocals. I don't know. If someone if someone knows of someone out there, please, um, uh, you know, write in the comments. I'll, I'll be happy to pay them, pay you guys forward to them if there's some great singing coaches out there doing this stuff. I mean, I know there's a lot of good channels, but I just mean for like John Hurt specifically, I don't know. But anyways, I'm rambling. You can obsess on his phrasing or just make it your own. You know what I mean? If it's too hard to sing a phrase over something, a difficult passage, sing that phrase a little bit earlier or a little bit later or hold one note a little bit longer till the hard passage is done before you cadence with the rest of the words. And you'll get it. And, and you'll be your own cool, original artist. You know, not really, you're doing a cover song, but you'll make it your own. You'll make it a unique John Hurt song. And you'll invite John Hurt into your soul, and you and John Hurt's soul will be commingled into one soul. Maybe that's what those bumper stickers mean, coexist. Maybe what all these people with coexist on their bumper stickers are talking about you and Hurt, your relationship with Mississippi, and how you're going to blend your own style in emotions with John. This is dumb. I'm going to stop now. Keep practicing. Let's go over the whole thing nice and slow. The entire thing from the top. Don't worry. I'm, re I'm still reading my own tab. We're all learning it together. Real slow. Three, four, the A. verse, but we're just going to do the, the first verse, actually, this time, instead of the, the refrain lyrics. Three, four, Miss Collins, we, Miss Collins, more, to see the sun. a little rough, but we're working on it. We're going to get good at it. I know we will. Um, you can stop the video before you move on and just get all of that. Um, at this point in the song, though, Hurt kind of picks up the tempo. You know, he's played through the verse one or two times, and he starts adding some extra notes in there, and it makes it even more difficult. So if this is already at your skill level, just stop and, and do that. But if you want to really get whoop, John Hurt blazing, keep watching, and we'll run through the verse with some added notes. All right, here we are at 57 seconds. He starts running through it quicker. If you don't have the tab, I'm, I'm not gonna post it for all this, so please download the tab. It's free, mikesmusicmethod.com um, under the tab thing. So here we go, we're back at the intro. I think this is the same. Then we have a lot of notes on the second measure here. I don't know how he's doing this up to speed. It's very difficult, we have a pinch, Six and one, second string, thumb on the fourth, then third string. I'm assuming John Hurt doesn't use his ring finger, so I'm pretty sure he's doing a uh, pinch with the middle, thumb, index, or sorry, pinch with the middle, yeah, index, thumb, index. So he's doing index twice in a row there. Pinch, then index, thumb, index. In the classical world, simply do ring finger, middle, thumb, index. But you know, those crazy folk guys don't do that. Then right back to a pinch on the G7, same idea. Very cool and hard measure. Good one to, 
you set a really slow drum beat to and practice along with it. And then the next measure, we have an added hammer on. And there's that compound movement again. Pinch, thumb, hammer. And then once when you hammer, you have the thumb with it. And then a quick and, thumb, and then another and at the end there. That measure is the same. Here we just have one extra note. This measure we just have one added note of this and at the end first string uh, sorry first fret second string then to the F that's exactly the same and then this is pretty similar too this is the same too I messed it up but that's exactly the same so that's it. I'm not going to give you like a detailed breakdown. Download that tab and at least you now have like a little audio sample of each of those trickier passages for you to work on and practice. If you're new, please consider a contribution. I would love to make more of these. I would love to sit down and teach you every John Hurt he's ever, every John Hurt, John Hurt recorded, every John Hurt song John Hurt recorded. I would love to do that, but I, I need time to do that. So please buy me some time. Um, just hit me up on PayPal with a one-time contribution, Mike's Music Method at gmail.com, or go to my Patreon, same name, Mike's Music Method, and become a monthly subscriber. Even, you know, a dollar is amazing. That's amazing. If you can do five or ten, mwah, because then I'm getting closer and closer to doing more of these videos. Hopefully, I'm doing one maybe every week or two. I would love to do you know, three or four videos a week, if I have the time to do that. Um, I would just share all sorts of cool songs with you guys and start doing more lesson stuff and maybe branching out. Maybe, but I would keep these coming for sure. So any little bit of contribution helps. I put a lot of time into these. Mike's Music Method.